Today we need to talk about are I being forced to leave and why people are saying this. We also have Subin from TXT talked about a scene in a gay club and then people were asking if he was gay or not and this is very interesting and funny. We also have a gay clip that was trending featuring a bum you and what he did. So hey Dumb, this is Dave Desai. Hey or not, make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell on. Grab your dumpling, hey spilling mug merch and let's go. Recently, people were actually very surprised after a specific TXT member hinted about a gay thing. This was very crazy and a lot of people were actually praising this specific member for saying that he has shown such support to the LGBT community. And I absolutely agree. I think it's absolutely beautiful that these members are taking time to support a community like the LGBT community and showing their fans that it's okay to be in the LGBT community. A lot of the time in K-pop, it's actually seen as frowned upon for not only idols to be gay, but even for just supporting it, which goes back to the whole idea of the race thing, right? Like a lot of people in K-pop say that Koreans love to use black culture as part of their music, but then they don't like black people. And it's a similar thing where labels and people in the industry will use shipping or gay fanfic as a way to promote the artist, but then the people who are a part of the fandom actually don't support the LGBT community. If you're unaware, fan meets right now for idols and celebrities are very different from what they used to be. First off, Korean fan meets have always been very different. It used to be a very long table and fans could go up to the members and meet them one by one, sit in front of the members and talk to each member individually. Whereas fan meets in the US are more so like they would just meet the fans one by one and if it was like a boy band, all the members would meet the fans all at once. And so the fan can't have a moment to talk to each of the members individually. Obviously, all of this shifted during the pandemic and idols decided to FaceTime fans one by one by doing what they call fan calls. This is almost better because then the specific fan can screen record the interaction and keep that for the rest of their life. Recently, one specific fan who recorded her conversation with Bamgyu posted a video saying that Bamgyu was a huge supporter of the LGBT community. The specific fan had a flag in the back of her video and it was none other than the pride flag. Bamgyu made sure to make a comment about it and say that he actually really liked that flag in the background. Of course, most idols are taught to not comment comment on random things unless they know what it means because these things can go viral and make them look bad. Idols nowadays are also aware that these fan calls are recorded and when they're posted, they go viral. So they can't just say whatever they want. It's not private. Bamgyu was also playing a game and he made sure to paint his character almost a rainbow color and I think this was absolutely so beautiful. I think we've come a long way and it's really nice to see such support. The fan obviously felt supported knowing that her favorite person supports her lifestyle and isn't going to judge her. I mean, that's amazing. While the world can be a bit judgmental, identifying that sometimes the fandom can be judgmental as well. And this can be very interesting because I don't know exactly where they're getting this from. So what am I talking about and what happened today? Well, RM recently got into a bit of a controversy, not specifically him, but something that Hybe allegedly did. If you're not aware, the magazine Weverse is owned by Hybe and they write articles of any artist or they just update regularly on whatever they want to. It's really smart because now the website and the app can grow beyond BTS because initially the app was just used by BTS fans in order to connect with BTS because it was never meant to be for people who have no idea who BTS is to now come in and if you were to Google these articles, you can end up on the app because the app will talk about artists like Morgan Wallen and other things that are not part of the label. So what's very interesting is this specific article broke down the song Spring Day by BTS. This is a very beautiful song and those who were around to kind of experience the release and those maybe who are still listening to it now just know how beautiful this song actually is. It's very emotional and the article highlights all of the hardships that the song highlights. The song focuses on the meaning of loss, resilience, and to just keep going. And for this reason, it was the reason why it was so popular. The song also happened to be written by RM, which is probably one of the more beautiful things about the song as we are seeing how deep and emotional the song actually is to BTS, given that it was written by one of the members that is a part of it. Now, this specific article that was written talks about those themes. It breaks down the song, or breaks down the lyrics, does all of those things. And now the article is in a bit of a backlash and not over anything they said, but over something that they didn't say. The article apparently never mentions that RM was the one who wrote the song with people all 
all over Twitter and X, posting and tweeting examples of when RM said that he wrote it and all that stuff, as if the article was saying that RM didn't write it. People were saying that the label needs to apologize to him, they were protesting this, and a lot of people were even asking Arm to leave the label fully and to go solo because this was the only way he was going to get the recognition he deserves. The hashtag telling the label to apologize to Arm was trending the entire day. People were commenting things, asking the label to apologize, and then showing screenshots that Arm was indeed the one who wrote it, and the label is discrediting him, and all that sort of stuff. However, what I find so interesting is that this specific article doesn't talk about anyone writing the song. It never mentions a specific writer at all. The point of the article was to talk about the message of the song and what was the meaning behind it. It has nothing to do with who wrote the song and who did it. It would be one thing if the article literally came out and specifically said that someone else wrote the song, and then I can understand the fandom's reaction to say, you're discrediting RM. He was the one who wrote it. So I don't know what people are upset about. They're upset about the fact that the article didn't mention the songwriter, even though it wasn't relevant to the article. That's why it was never written. Every article that ever exists has to credit every single songwriter in the song that they're breaking down. Am I doing a bad thing right now? Because every sentence of this video isn't talking about how amazing BTS is. And I'm not crediting all of their accolades in every sentence that I'm saying. Like, what is this? Now, going back to a bit more fun news, we have Subin seen in a gay club, and it's not exactly what you think it is. First off, a specific fan bought Subin along to a gay drag club, and by bought, I mean brought the photo card, and then took a photo or a video of Subin's photo card in the club. And this got so much attention and blew up, and people were laughing, and it was so fun, because they felt like the idol was actually in the club. And I think this is perfect, because I think Subin would actually go to the gay club, and probably would enjoy this type of event. Now, Subin has been in a dating rumor before, and it's not one that you would think, but apparently he has been accused of dating a member from AT, specifically the member Sunghua. This was a joke that was going on for a long time where Sunghua had posted a photo asking his fans to take care of him, and then Subin posted a photo with the same caption. There really isn't much more of this dating rumor except that people believe the two are friends, so it makes sense that they would copy each other's social media captions. I also think that there's a chance that the social media team just accidentally gave gave Subin and Sunghua both the same caption to post, and that is just my conspiracy. There's also more comments of Subin's sexuality when the fandom wants him to be gay, and even memeing his comments and posts to push towards gay people. And then there were apparently posts going on saying that Subin has come out as gay, and answered the gay question in the search engines before. Of course this didn't happen. The search suggestions for artists are always very interesting, because they often don't relate to anything that is actually happening, and a lot of times they could be because fans will see a bad search suggestion and just flood the actual search results with unrelated things. But other times I've seen fanfics written about Subin or whoever where they'll make him, let's say, homophobic and then that's like coming up in the searches. Fanfic should definitely not be in the search. I actually have very mixed opinions on fanfic being on Twitter or X to begin with. I do think that people who want to do that should just go on Wattpad. That way, if there are any weird search suggestions that would come up, it wouldn't be seen as actually bad. Because a lot of what people do is they'll just see a search suggestion and if it says something like homophobic or kid toucher or whatever bad thing, people will just believe it rather than clicking on it to see what it's actually about. And it could even be a K-pop idol talking about homophobic people and how bad they are, but the search will just say artist name and then homophobic speech, which looks terrible. Let me know what you think. Make sure you check out Patreon for more videos. Link down below. Thanks for this lovely comment right here. Love you. Bye.